Moore, as of yet, looking to stake their reputations in a whole new territory against one another. And this could wind up being the most physical matchup of the entire evening. Well, we're looking at Steve Pena right now, who is, I, I love the eye. The eyes are the window to the soul. Uh, they can tell such a story. And Pena was trained in Germany with the likes of Walter. He's been in the game for six or seven years, and he is the most no-frills, no-nonsense athlete, maybe on this entire event. He just wants to get out there and hurt people. a self-described bully. He's a heavy hitter. He's proud of it. But he's starting to make his reputation known in various parts of the country. He's been competing out of the past four years out of uh, Detroit, Michigan. And these are two men that I think you look at, Pena and Broner. They are mad, bad, and dangerous to know. Maybe uh, at least what we've seen thus far amongst the most physically imposing. I put a caveat to that, knowing who's in the main event later on. But, uh... This will be the calm before the storm between Pena and uh, Broner. And uh, Broner is very tentative, very hesitant. And you got to wonder uh, what kind of a mind game this is, what kind of a machination this is, and Who's going to get the upper hand here? You know, Beta, I know you've been in matches sometimes, and you've managed in matches where some, sometimes it seems like the ooh, charge that you're managing or maybe their opponent has lost the matchup before it starts because that's psychological advantage. Right, Broner has made eye contact, locked eyes with his opponent, and he's not broken it the entire time, the entire opening of this match. And there's a, just a, a paintbrush to the face, very disrespectful. But like you said, he's a bully. He's proud of it. Yeah. I enjoy the, uh, I'm assuming that's a tribute to what? The Martin TV show from the 90s Looks on like Broner's it, yeah. gear? Is that actually Martin Lawrence on his gear? There's a collision center ring. Nobody budgets. Beta, we could use all the cliches, irresistible force and movable object and back of the Titan. And I'm not sure which one really fits. You can pick whichever one you like the most at home. But bottom line is, this is going to be, I think, the matchup that has oh. the most parity, the most similarity out of anybody we've seen thus far. Yeah, uh, virtually every other match so far tonight has started out with uh, a little bit of a, a technical showcase, a little bit of technical wrestling. Not this one. This one has immediately turned into just chop for chop, strike for strike. And two men who are so no-nonsense and so straightforward in everything they do. Oh! Ooh. 
jumps in the back are so much worse. They really are. Yeah. They stink, don't they? They hurt, and you don't see them coming. And I think Broner just needs a moment to regroup after that. And uh, Peng is the more worldly of the two. Certainly, you think of uh, Germany and WXW. You think about so many great uh, wrestlers from all over the world that have called that place either a temporary home or have stopped in for a weekend. Of course, the 16 karat gold tournament that is a staple of uh, that particular organization. So you know if you come out of Germany, you've had to survive a hell of a lot to just get this far. Yeah, I, I mean, I know from personal experience having lived there for a few months, training in the WXW school is intense every single day. It's not just a matter of the wrestling training, it's just conditioning. And like you said, it's just keeping up with that mentality, with that mindset. If you choose to go there like Steve Pena did, then you are serious about your wrestling. Yeah, and that really hardens you as a competitor and uh, oh, that was to the throat. That was a chop to the throat. And you think about what Pena has as far as pain threshold, as far as just the, the, the painful tools in his arsenal that he can dish out. And Broner has to rise to that occasion. And so far, he, he has here. Suplex into the cover for two. We know, I know Broner has competed before in uh, Pele Pro Wrestling down in Texas. And, uh, oh! Oh, jeez. Man, I think it's only a matter of time before this thing, if it hasn't yet, it gets personal. Brutal elbow strikes to the back of the neck. That's the point of the elbow. No padding there. That's, that's bone on flesh. It looked like Pena was going for a slam, and Broner just fought it every inch of the way. Well, I think Broner's going to have the power in. Oh, what a follow away slam. Send Pena almost all the way to the outside. Yeah. And Broner, his, his strength there, two count only, his strength almost works against him. He's got to pull Pena back towards the center of the ring to get a good cover. And another observation here about Broner is he's, he's so deliberate. He's calculating. He doesn't seem like he's going to let this rattle him. If this matchup stays wide open, if you can use those throws and those slams, it's advantage Broner. If it's more of a tight striking matchup, I give the advantage to Pena. And I think you're exactly right, Joe. That's what Pena's going for. Oh. <laughs> and Broner follows up with a slam. Two and no. Broner picked the leg of Pena. And that's, that's the, such a such a mind game as, as every time you come in with a strike Broner can literally catch you capture you and do whatever the hell he wants with you from there and it's not you know the, the fanciest it's not the prettiest it's literally just picking up a man and throwing him yeah it does not need to be pretty to be painful without question referee Bobby Williams on the case making sure that Broner breaks by five Pena fighting his way to his feet Broner, though, not letting him out of the corner yet. Oh! Speaking of Walter, those chops. Yeah, it's almost a guttural noise. But Pena says, bring it on! Well, it's not the first hard chop Pena's felt. It won't be the last. And Pena sikes up, and Broner takes a couple steps back. Broner, I don't think he's ever seen anyone react to one of his chops that way. Just blistering the chest of his opponent. Pena is relentless. Broner just physically shoved him off. And you can see the discoloration, the welts forming across both these men's chests and back so far. Pena with a snap, German, and Broner just tosses him with one of his own. Oh, what a gut check this is. Who wants it more? Who can survive the most? And another trading Germans in the middle of the ring. Once again, Broner with the snatch of German, but no, Pena with the trip. Yeah, Pena. Went for a submission, but Broner rolled out. 
Now you're trying to trap Broner low oh. to the ground, neutralize that size, neutralize that power. Man. Oh! Banyu with the cover! And that lariat leveled Broner. What a stalemate of a fight this has been. Oh, and on. again, and I, I don't think this is a... There's a pin. But no! The leg, so close. I don't think that this is a position that Isaiah Broner is used to finding himself in at all. Not at all. I think uh, Broner's used to being the aggressor. He's used to being the dominant force. And Pena, even though he's outsized and he's outpowered, just the, the sheer uh, mentality and the striking game and the determination, the ability to block out the pain, has pressed Pena forward. Pena on his feet. Count out the striking game of Broner, a former boxer. You give him the opening, he'll take it. Backbreaker coming up, perhaps. Splash mount. Yeah. Oh, and Pena, although he was fighting it the entire way, not able to escape. There's a pin. And another near fall. The referee's hand was just about to graze the canvas when Pena managed to kick out. And trying to read the face of Isaiah Broner, I'm sure a number of different emotions going through that man's head right now. Well, they might be Joe, but they don't show on his face. It's scary. Yeah, well. So deliberate. You, you got to stay stone-faced and focused and just to your next move, your next strategy. It's a human game of chess in every sense of the word, as Pena's limp and over the shoulder of Broner, no! Broner likes to go F5, but he got caught! That guillotine choke, and notice the, the scissors, the grapevine, are on the left leg of Broner as well. It, it, it enables him to keep the pressure on, does Pena. Broner can't escape and counter because he can't move his body. Broner trying to fight it, but Pena... Pena has that guillotine locked around the neck. Referee is checking. And Pena cinches in deeper with a body scissors. Broner broke the first great fight, not the second. But he's not done yet. Pena pulling his opponent to his feet, but Broner fires back. Two count only, and Pena kicks out, but does not release the grip on the choke. That's incredible. The entire time Broner's counter happened, he was still caught in the choke, and now we're naked choke. Pena just transitioning from submission to submission. And Broner's out, the officials called it. States and Germany and all points in between with a statement victory over a former boxer, an all-around powerhouse, and somebody that came in with a lot of momentum, and Isaiah Broner. And Broner brought the strength, but in the end, it was the technical prowess of Steve Pena that got him the win. Yeah, a couple of chokes to get the job done, but Pena dug deep enough in that arsenal and now, uh, what appears to be a show of respect. I don't know Pena well enough to know how uh, genuous and genuine he is. But it seems to be on the level. Pena realized he was in a fight tonight. Yeah, sometimes, although it can seem absolutely vicious at the time, if you're someone who just thrives on competition and violence, this is what you need. This is what makes you happy. I know he's not smiling, but he's smiling on the inside. Yeah, he's been taken to his limit by somebody who in many ways traveled a vastly different road, but is still in, 